Welcome to Education Matters, presented by the Public School Forum of North Carolina. I'm your host, Mary Ann Wolf. Today we are joined by teachers and students from Orange High School in Orange County Schools and Middle Creek High School in Wake County Public Schools. They will talk about what culturally responsive curriculum means and what engages students in our classrooms. We are so pleased to be joined by a teacher and several students at Orange High School in Orange County Schools. We are joined by Xavier Adams, who's the NCAT 2022 Prudential North Carolina Beginning Teacher of the Year, and students Tia Hilber, Le'Veon Lewis, and Grace McDaniel. Welcome to each of you. Xavier, can you explain what culturally responsive teaching is and how it impacts students? Yeah, so for me, culturally responsive teaching in my classroom looks like embedding the different parts of a student's life into the curriculum that I teach. So that might be the music that's important to them. That might be uh, representing heroes or different icons from their culture, um, from their history into the classroom. That might be also having intentional conversations around current day events as well. I think sometimes when we think about culturally responsive teaching, we just simply stick to kind of who are the different heroes from the past. But history, culture is alive, it's breathing, it's something that's valuable. And so in the classroom, it's important for teachers to embrace culturally responsive teaching in a current day setting as well. Well, and we're so happy to be joined by students who have been in your classes. And I wonder, Tia, if you could talk a little bit about what would a classroom look like and what does your classroom look like if it's embracing the cultures of all of the students in that classroom? In terms of African American studies, which was the class that I took with Mr. Xavier, and it was the, mo- the most culturally inclusive class that I've taken so far, um, you can just really see that people are enjoying what they're learning about, as well as, like Mr. Xavier said, things are incorporated from their own cultures about what they're learning about. And I think it's one of the classes that had the most diversity in it as well, which you can really tell that a culture is being included if people of that culture are willing to take that class to learn more about it. And you can just tell that everybody's having a lot of fun and just learning a lot of new things. It's really happy setting. Sia made really good points. I think having different cultures represented well in the classroom is something hard to find. Um, And I think that's something Mr. Xavier has done really well. And you can just tell that everyone feels a little bit closer and we're able to relate to each other better because of that. Le'Veon, I know you're a senior, but also a student of Mr. Adams and have had several years at your high school. I'm curious to hear your perspective. The classroom is definitely like a melting pot, different students from different backgrounds and cultures. So it's, it's important and definitely um, it's a great experience to hear that people's ideas and where they come from. Xavier, what are some of the techniques that you use to teach in a culturally responsive way? Teaching in a culturally responsive way really looks like handing over the keys to the students. And what I mean by that is um, having a lot of dialogue back and forth between myself and the students and allowing their questions, their thoughts, their concerns to kind of guide where we land for that day and what we're learning. So I might have a general outline of where I want to go, but if through the process of conversation around current events, students have certain questions or certain inquiries that arise, I definitely want to explore those with them. It kind of gets to the heart of what they're thinking about, what what seems important to them. So I think part of implementing culturally responsive teaching is also kind of understanding that that teacher-student dynamic shifts in a way to where that idea of culture, classroom culture, also is co-created with the students. And I'm really curious, sometimes we hear teachers um, say that their students aren't as engaged or not participating, even when they really carefully design lessons that are hoping for that um, interaction. And Le'Veon, I'd love to hear from you when you're in a class that is taught in a culturally responsive way, do you feel like students participate differently? Most definitely. You can definitely see uh, it's more, it's definitely more of the atmosphere overall and uh I, yeah I, you can definitely see it. more people more people are open to being vulnerable and honest as well and that's a big part of it as well everybody is able to be sure be, be vulnerable and, and share how they actually feel you definitely feel that it's, it's having a discussion conversation the techniques that he uses what do you see as different in that class than maybe some of your others um he definitely asks questions that maybe don't have a clear answer or that um, are really left up 
for the students to interpret and see how they feel about it. And it's less of this is what happened and this is how you should feel. It's we're really building a relationship with the students in your class and Mr. Xavier. Tia, when lessons are taught in a way that connects with students, the way that Le'Veon and Grace have described, um, what, you know, how does that make you feel and how does it motivate you differently? It makes me feel a lot more comfortable to share my thoughts just because I can relate to what's being talked about. And I feel, I just feel comfortable to share my ideas and it, it motivates you to talk more when you like know that people are going to listen and then discuss your ideas and things like that. So it's just, it's motivating to know that people care what you're going to talk about. So I'm a little curious if you think you work harder because of this culturally responsive and inclusive classroom. If any of you want to share, do you tend to do more, work harder, push yourself more? I'm Mr. Xavier, but we're really, really active. Uh, a lot of times we see a lot of teachers uh, kind of accept the application of students of color, students in general, very really love. And Mr. Xavier is like the exact opposite of that. You know, so my team was saying, it's just uh, like the idea of being comfortable and knowing, like, I'm getting some bad classroom if I can get the, the supplements for as well. So if I walked into your classroom when you were in there with Mr. Xavier, um, I'd love to hear from each of you. What would it look and feel like? And um, like, what would we see? How would we see that the different cultures are represented in the curriculum? And Tia, I'll start with you. I think a good example that I could use is last year, uh, two different times, actually. We listened to different songs like Kendrick Lamar and stuff like that, which you wouldn't think every day when you just listen to it really talks about Black culture, but then you really listen to it and you start to dissect it, and you can tell that, like, wow, this really says something about me and where I come from. And, like, listening to that kind of stuff, you kind of see students, like, having more fun and being able to relate more to what's being talked about. So then that creates more of like a fun and welcoming atmosphere to walk into. And then there were other times where we looked at different artists and things like that, which I'm, I'm very passionate about art, but I know not everybody is. But you can tell that like even looking at something different, like you don't always dissect art in like a social studies class. So like doing things like that keeps people interested. And it's just, it's, it's a good atmosphere. I really enjoy it. I think if a teacher were to just walk in here, it almost looks a little informal. Or you just, you know, you walk into all these students that are laughing and having a good time and probably making little jokes. But often Mr. Xavier will have like some modern day like article or um, song you will listen to that kind of ties in what we're learning today. And I think it's really makes it a lot easier for students to grasp what he's trying to teach us. And Le'Veon, you get the final word. What do you want people to know about your experience in Mr. Xavier's class and why it's so important that we have culturally responsive teaching and learning? Yeah, so definitely, um, if you were to walk into our classroom, there'd be some childhood stuff, you know, some some lower hill, you know. It's almost like like Grace was saying, like it seems like like a little like odd at first. You you need like a level of comfortability and vulnerability, I guess. So it's almost like we're like a big family just kind of cliche, but we definitely are, you know, because like, like, we don't really know each other a lot outside of the classroom, but in here, you know, it's like walking through a whole different atmosphere, people are more comfortable and vulnerable and open to talk about different things, so. Well, it's so great to be joined by all of you. Um, Mr. Xavier, any last words? I can tell you have some phenomenal students here, and I know there are more. Um, final words, just happy Black History Month. I'm grateful to have uh, my students in the class to be able to join this interview because um, they're the ones that teachers work for. And so I'm honored that they were willing to participate. Well, thank you for always lifting up student voices. We definitely know that about you already. So thanks so much to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we'll be joined by students from UNC Chapel Hill and Middle Creek High School, as well as a teacher from Middle Creek High School in Wake County. Education Matters is brought to you each week in part by Participate Learning, uniting our world through global learning. Welcome back to Education Matters. We are so pleased to be joined by Matt Sheldon, a teacher at Middle Creek High School in Wake County Public Schools, Hallie Brew, a graduate of Middle Creek High School and a current student at UNC Chapel Hill, and three additional students from Middle Creek High School, Addie Simpson, Aliza Zahid and Alexa Burke. Thank you all for being here today. 
Thank you for having us. Mr. Sheldon, I'd love to start with you. Can you explain what culturally responsive teaching is and how it impacts students? Culturally responsive teaching starts with seeing the students in your room and their myriad identities as being an asset, as being something that can, you know, broaden the experience for everybody in the room and using that as a resource. I also see that in that I want my students to come into the room and see themselves represented in everything from things I might have hanging up around the room, but then most importantly, the curriculum that we're learning in classroom, I want them to be able to see themselves reflected in it. And you know, that way they can start building some uh, you know, bridges between each other in the classroom too. I want the kids to uh, kind of be a text for each other. I want them to learn from each other. So, you know, I think that it's hard for kids to connect to curriculum and to content that they just don't see themselves reflected in. So for me, the starting point is I have to put things in front of my students that makes them feel seen, that makes them feel like their voices are being heard. And that, uh, again, that that's an asset, that that's something that we can draw from and we can all learn from. I wonder what kind of a difference can an equity centered classroom have? Um, I think that it definitely encourages a student to speak up about the things that they're passionate about. For me, an equity center classroom was the difference in me accepting who I was as a person, um, specifically based upon my race and like different attributes of myself. But I think that when you, like Mr. Sheldon said, put texts and other things in front of a student that show them that they matter, it makes all the difference about how they'll interact with you and what they get out of the class. What kind of a difference can an equity-centered classroom have for you? Um, equity-centered classroom to me it shows that it teaches students that it's not wrong to ask for help or to ask for questions. If you give each student the amount of attention that they need, because in my personal experience, some teachers, they just neglect, so to speak, um, students that they deem smart because they see, oh, you can handle yourself. You don't need my help. And then this like label that is put on the smart kids, it makes them scared to be asked for questions. But in an equity centered classroom, if you give each student the amount of attention that they need, it teaches them it's OK to ask. Like you're not going to seem unsmart just because you need help. Aliza and Addie, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what a classroom looks like if it's embracing the cultures of all the students in that classroom. Aliza? I think embracing all of the students' cultures means, you know, having posters around the room, even if it's a figure or quotes. It shows that you have some type of representation, not of just you, but of other people who have done hard work. And having deep discussions and conversations is important because if you're not having a good connection with your classmates and even your teacher, then it's not really helping you or your learning because if they don't fully understand you, I feel like then they kind of see like a disconnection and it's not really helping them. For a classroom to embrace the cultures of students in that classroom, I believe that current events are a very important aspect of that open conversation, lack of criticism, um, international history and ample context to that history and additionally, accurate and unbiased depictions and descriptions of that history. That's really helpful. And that's actually a great segue into thinking about what a culturally responsive curriculum means. And I wonder if you'd like to add anything else, Addie, as to what that means to you. Diverse perspectives, especially within literature and history, while respecting others' cultures, especially those who are not in the dominant demographic of that society, um, which additionally provides intercultural understanding and elicits deeper empathy and can avoid apathy. Alexa and Aliza, I wonder if you could talk just a little bit about when lessons are taught in a way that connects students with the content, like what does that look like? I think our listeners are curious, like if they were in your classroom, what would that look like or sound like or feel like to them? The students seem to actually care, so to speak, because I believe that many students, when they're given the lesson that does not connect to them, they only care about getting the good grade. They actually don't care about learning the content. But when that curriculum connects to them, it seems like the classroom just like comes alive. 
And it's great because they actually want to learn and they want to do further research. And they'll even ask questions past that like certain unit and like to relate back to. Aliza, how would you describe lessons that really connect with students um, in this culturally responsive way? I feel like lessons that connect to you like in a cultural way really makes you think about yourself more. It, when you see, when you're re- as if it's like a reading passage or something, you can really see that, oh, I have value. And seeing something that's like culturally connecting to you, it makes you think the teacher really took time and effort to create this lesson and you don't like feel left out. And like from my experience as being a brown girl in like a predominantly white school, it makes you think that, oh, no one's left out and you're included in the lessons. Thank you. And we know right now there's a lot of conversation across our state, quite frankly, across the country on what should be taught in schools and what curriculum should look like. I wonder, Mr. Sheldon, if you can share a little bit about how you think about that. To me, it's, I think of it, I try to think of it from the perspective of my students. And I try to think as they hear the adults in their community have these conversations, I imagine, you know, they can't help but to feel themselves being erased. And, and that's, on the, that's on the lower end of the spectrum, all the way up to they have to feel an incredibly negative antipathy towards them when they, they hear about, like we heard down in Florida, the pushback against the AP African American history course. Um, I mean, how can a student hear that and not feel as though they are being denigrated in some way? So, um, you know, as you're hearing the students say, you know, they, the engagement is so much higher when they see themselves reflected in the work and when they, their voices are valued as a text. I try to use my students and their perspectives as something that we study in the room just as much as a poem from the Harlem Renaissance. So, you know, I just, again, I just, I try to imagine what it must feel like to, to hear folks in your community whether that's local or across the state or even nationally, talk about, you know, trying to push curriculum to the side. And, um, you know, that's that's incredibly sad and frustrating and and it makes me angry, to be honest. Um, You know, so I want to be a source for my students where that's just not the case, where their perspective is valued, where their cultural identity is valued and where that's something that we should be discussing them in our room. They should be learning from each other, um, not just being pushed to the margins um, or you know, being completely erased. And Hallie, I'm really curious to hear from you because you've had this experience. It led you to UNC um, Chapel Hill. And I'm wondering what your perspective is now as a college student looking back on what you've had and why it's important. Yeah, so I would say something that I've learned so far while I've been here is that a lot of us that come from North Carolina, we really don't have like a great understanding of how our cultural history and significance affects us in like a learning context. And that's something that we're not often told to sit with and really try to understand. So like Mr. Sheldon was saying, like we understand that it's angering to see um legislature fight back about not having an AP African American history class like we understand that that is hurtful to us and we know on the base level why that is but I think that taking a deeper look into why that's happening is really important and culturally responsive teaching is so essential and not only like as my peers were saying understanding perspectives that are yours and different than yours but like being able to enter a place of self-reflection where you are then able to learn and like continue and further your education. So I think that it's really essential um, and that it needs to have a much higher importance than it does right now. Well, I want to thank you all um, for your thoughtful comments and reflections. And I must tell you that I would love to be in your classroom with all of you and learn with you. So um, thank you for joining us today. And Mr. Sheldon, thank you for, as always, lifting up student voice so prominently. Thank you all as well. I mean, look at how lucky I am. Look at these great (laughs) kids that I get to work with every day. 
It's thank amazing. You. And it gives us hope. Um, absolutely. Well, thank you all for being here. And after the break, this week's final word. This week's final word will be shared by Dr. Lauren Fox, the Senior Director of Policy and Research at the Public School Forum of North Carolina. When students enter a classroom, they bring with them their entire selves, their identities, their strengths and weaknesses, their interests, and their culture often impact how students engage and what they take away from each lesson. North Carolina's student population is incredibly diverse. Culturally responsive teaching aims to ensure that all students can see themselves in the curriculum and centers cultural differences as assets to the classroom and school communities. Culturally responsive teaching raises expectations for all students by removing the assumption that their identities or cultures could be a barrier to academic success. Teachers using culturally responsive practices draw on students' existing knowledge, their experiences, and their cultural backgrounds to inform curricula and classroom discussions. These practices benefit all students by helping them to connect the class content to their everyday lives. We know from research and from what we heard from students today that culturally responsive teaching leads students to be more engaged, motivated, and successful. Culturally responsive teaching also allows educators to improve their own cultural competence and to better connect with their students. Teachers' ability to connect and build relationships with their students is essential to good teaching. And we know that teachers are the number one school-related factor impacting student outcomes. So having this connection with their teacher and seeing themselves represented in the curriculum can help students feel valued and empowered. The value of culturally responsive teaching extends far beyond the school experience as it develops the critical skills and students that are needed to thrive in a global economy. By cultivating empathy, critical thinking, and problem solving skills, students learn to work collaboratively with others who bring different perspectives and experiences. The demands of the 21st century society and economy will require graduates to identify, analyze, and develop solutions to address real world problems like climate change, public health crises, political divides, and systemic inequities. Our students are already living in this complicated world. They're already facing hard realities as they navigate current events and reckon with historical truths. We must meet them where they are and ensure that they're fully prepared to become leaders in their communities. We've made progress towards a more just and equitable world, but we still have much more work to do. Being willing to shift the way we educate our students and engage them more deeply in class content is part of that work. We live in an ever evolving world and all of the children of North Carolina deserve and are constitutionally entitled to a sound basic education that will prepare them for the future. Therefore, we have a duty to make sure that education is able to evolve as well. Thank you for taking the time with us to learn and think about education. That's all for today and we'll see you next week.